Hello and welcome to The Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast, for all your latest news, information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Catherine Egan and on this week's episode, I'm joined by future beef farmer Inga Spahi on the key steps he takes in advance of preparing for calving, calving the cow and caring for the newborn calf. Ingus, a very busy season ahead. How are things going on the farm at the moment? Well, we just started calving there in the last last week there. Um, we're trying to get cattle out straight away, you know, and it's very dry around us at the moment. So we're trying to get our, our replacements out as well at the moment as well. We had them out there last week and we're just trying to get more stock out as well. And just really concentrating on our calving as well at the moment. How are you managing the cows now prior to Kevin? What are they getting from a nutrition point of view? We got our t- silage tested there uh, back last September and uh, came back at uh, 68% uh, DMD and we got it tested for the minerals analysis as well. And um, I am given uh, minerals as well uh, accordingly. Um, according to the, the, the report, I came back that I needed um, magnesium, more than 17 grams of magnesium, phosphorus, and sodium as well. Um, so we I got a mineral for that as well. Um we're also back along there three weeks ago or three weeks before the calf, we gave them um a vaccination for Rotovec uh, Corona. And really uh, we're constantly checking for body condition score, like um we don't want them fit, not fat. Um really it was that's one of our big things. So we're kind of getting ready for that the, the constantly really like. For cows that have calved so far, Ingus, how have you managed calving those cows? Um, well, we have calving cameras in the shed and uh, we have the moo call on them as well. Um, we, we were really, you know, before the calving, especially heifers there, I think my heifers um, back uh, last year, April. And um, we, we had them all coming there, six of them there coming in. So we really had just all them pinned together and uh, we were kind of trained them really, you know, not really training, but you know, getting them into calving pins and stuff like that, and uh, calving gate and stuff. Uh, so there'll be no problem with calving time. Um, really, yeah, calving the cow was probably the, the 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 big thing on that really. And um, we we're using easy calving sires was a big thing, and we're having no major problems at the moment at all at all. Um, and we've good calving uh, facilities set up, and we made a few small little adjustments during the winter there. You know, having gates swinging the right way and stuff like that makes it essential job for uh, health and safety point of view, and uh, that we're never going to the pin with them. Like even just having the simple thing of the gate swinging the right way made a big difference and stuff like that. And those heifers that you synchronised, they're all going to be calving now at twenty four months. How are you avoiding calving difficulty with them, particularly with the sire that you selected for those heifers? Well, we got easy calving. Uh, um, sires, we even we had um, a dairy cross blue heifer, and we used a re- really exceptionally easy calf and sire for that. We used a uh, 47 43 there on that, and um, no major problems at all. And the body condition score is a big thing as well. We kind of ca- constantly looked at them the whole time, then uh, make sure they were bang on body condition about you know around the 2.53, like um really on on that because they were really essential really to have them right as you possibly could and we also used uh, on the other heifers we used Eden Deliver which is a uh, renowned uh, easy calf and sire as well and for the cows that have calved so far you've said they've gone quite well but from your experience how much time would you give a cow before intervening to assist um, well we nearly if the bag was out um, calving bag we'd nearly give the two hours but we be constantly um, looking uh, to see what's happening. If there's progress, if there's constantly you know, progress going on, we wouldn't intervene. But we'd watch everything really from the as much sorry much as we can really from the camera, and see see how, how things are going. But the two hour rule is generally what we we go with, and after that we we'd handle them and see what 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 has to be done then. We but we try even to as much as long as we can like on the two hours but obviously we can't leave it much longer either like and you mentioned there the importance of health and safety and obviously the fact you're working off farm labor management is very important at this time of year uh yeah it is really uh having like job everything set up having enough calf and pins uh, um even if you can separate one out to each pin you know at, at the time uh makes a, a big difference like so that you're never going in with them like and you've only one uh 
con- one cow to concentrate on like and even having the ca- the calf and um gates the uh you can you know, just put a bit of nuts out and if you've been trained beforehand you know to come out put out their head it makes a big difference just catch them in the gate uh a big thing uh for us anyway um because you know you just don't, you just don't know with cows how they're going to react to at calf in time either and trying to stay out of the penis is our, our biggest thing really yeah most definitely, particularly from a health and safety point of view. I suppose once the calf arrives on the ground, how do you manage caring for the newborn calf? Well, straight away, we, we, we try to put on um, our iodine straight away and then um, we get try to get classroom into them. Um, uh, if, if if we don't then uh, have classroom, like this year now, uh, I was testing the classroom there as well and I had a really good classroom over my heifers there uh, from feeding uh, soya to them. And uh, we stored away um, five five liters. Like if we need it again, we put it in put it into the the the, the defreeze. So we try to get the, the as much as we possibly classroom into them as much as the calf would soak, and we uh, make sure even the heifers we 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 were good. We bail them up for, and uh, make sure the calf would soak them, and then uh, we'd leave them in the pin. The heifers, especially thirty six hours or more, even. Uh, just to bond because they can react a bit. Um, they wouldn't, you know, it's the first time being a mother and stuff like that, so they can react differently. And then we get them out on grass, like especially with the weather so good, we're trying to get them out now as quick as we can. After, really, you know, after six, 36 hours, maybe 48 hours, we, we're trying to get them out on, uh, out on grass. And the cows, like, we will do 24 hours and out on grass as well. Like. And what size groups are you putting them into once they go out to grass? Um, I well, they're small enough at the moment. Uh, we've nine cows calf now. We we, we ca- start calf with the first one there on the twenty sixth uh, of January, 10, 10 days before the time with that one out on its own. Obviously, with nine, uh, we've I've all the heifers together because I, I I'm giving them actually a kilo of meal as well a day, um, just keep docility and uh, just make sure that they keep their body condition score as well. Um, but the cows would probably go into groups of four and five and then um, job put into groups of ten, really. And you mentioned there the fact your mind and the body condition score of these heifers. How will they be managed now up to breeding time? Well, we keep uh, a close eye on them, uh, Catherine, and uh, we, we really look at the body condition score and, um, like, you know, if there's any discharge rents, we'd maybe get call out the vet and uh, make sure that, like, they get them back in calf is the biggest thing and cycling and that we'd have a prosectomized bull with running you know, close to breeding time, make sure they're cycling. But we, we would be giving them a bit of um, of uh, concentrates as well, a kilo or two, you know, it's depending on how their condi- body condition score is going as well. That's great, Ingus. And I suppose just for farmers listening, what two or three tips have you from your experience, calving cows, that you have that will make a difference to other farmers in advance of the calving season? Um, I, well, I'd have to say, trying to be prepared, have all your, your stuff, uh, right, all your pins correct beforehand, have all gates working, have all your equipment, cameras working, have your uh, move call set up, and then um, using easy calf and sires makes an awful difference to me anyway, because the calf, the cow is no problem calving generally. Uh, calf is up sucking um, very hardy because you know he's no trouble getting classroom, classroom into them and um, trying to get them out onto grass as quick as you possibly can as well after that then Joe once the bond is made it'd be my my biggest thing isn't it that's great thanks very much Ingus and the very best to look for the rest of the calving season thanks very much that's all for this week's episode and my thanks to Ingus for joining me on the show you can catch up on all other shows and interviews from the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie or you can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss a show. For all other updates from our Beef programme, keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Until next time, I'm Catherine Egan and thanks for listening.